uh, trees cannot solve global warming challenges. Uh, you can plant five billion trees and they suck carbon out for a few years and then they fall over. When they fall over, they put their carbon straight back into the air again. Uh, if, we have, if we have too much carbon dioxide around, it's because we have released sticky stuff that has stored carbon under the earth for tens of millions of years. And there's only one safe place for that carbon, which is to take it back, put it back down. Can we do it? Yes, we can. The technology is there already. We could put a cap on many power stations and capture up to 90% of the carbon coming out of them at relatively low cost. It would increase the cost of retail electricity by only 20% uh, in, in, in the European Union, and it's already starting. And it's an example. This is what we call carbon capture technology. And it's an example of a whole range of technologies that we're going to see in the future. Um, but the real battle uh, and, and the real, real tension in our world will not be just to try to find a way of balancing our carbon footprint together uh, in a way which allows economic development in a just way and puts some constraints, serious constraints, on the developed world which produced most of the carbon in the first place and now have a moral duty to sort out their own consumption problems without, uh, without totally stifling economic development and a, and a carbon revolution in places like India. Um, but in the middle of all of that, we will find the attention begins to turn of the world, not just from carbon saving and carbon capture and how we're going to balance things, but it will turn slowly but surely to a huge new investment, not just in solar and wind and and waves, but in, uh, in the next generation of nuclear, which is not um, the usual fission reactions, which uh, produce so much uh, radioactive waste and potential for terrorist abuse, but fusion reactions, which is a different kind of technology, which could allow, for instance, this entire hotel to be powered with the chemicals from three mobile phones and a whole load of seawater for two years. Just those chemicals with very little waste. Could we do it? You bet we could. If we put even a fraction of the one trillion dollars that the United States and other countries spends on military spending each year into solving this issue of international security, then I think we'd find a solution very quickly. At the moment, the total investment in cold fusion technology is not $1 trillion, it's $6 billion. And that's the problem. So we have, uh, uh, you know, 100 years ago, we hardly knew how to light a light bulb. Uh, electricity had only just been discovered, really. Uh, the combustion engine was still uh, just in its infancy. And you think that technology and knowledge is doubling every three months in terms of its power. That's amazing. And you think, what we will know about our world in 30 years' time, it's beyond comprehension compared to where we are today. So I am certain that we could apply even just the ingenuity from the scientists in this room to find some solutions to these problems if we had enough budget to do it. 